the founder of the oldest black-owned architectural firm in Michigan. Roughly 1963, started my own firm as a registered architect. On huge projects that have stood the test of time. I wanted to be in a major office building and doing major projects. For Black History Month, we highlight a man significant to the very landscape of our city, architect Howard Sims. You may not know him by name, but from downtown Detroit to museums and college campuses across the state, you have certainly seen, benefited from, and even stepped foot in many of his projects. The first project architect Howard Sims ever worked on is one that spanned his entire career. Was Cobo Hall with the with the original architect for the new Cobo Hall then. Um, we're still finishing that up now. <laughs> now 82, Sims first worked on Cobo in the late 50s while he was a student at the University of Michigan. It is a, uh, it's an amazing building, it's very large. Decades later, after launching his own firm, he became the principal architectural firm on every expansion, renovation, and redesign, including the most recent. Sims was born and raised in the city of Detroit. The first black architect to ever have a job, as far as I know, was the same year I graduated from high school. So there weren't jobs available. The field had not been open to blacks for very long, but Sims had an edge. At the end of 1952, I joined the Navy and became a CB which was a construction battalion. It gave me a, a leg up, and it also gave me employability. Howard Sims & Associates was the firm's original name founded in the early 60s. His first big client, the city of Detroit in 1970. And that was a joint venture for a new Detroit General Hospital. And more opportunity followed. And I got to be known then. I was the first chairman of the Construction Code Commission. Appointed by the governor to write the initial construction code for the entire state while continuing to get more work. From Detroit public schools to colleges and universities. Wayne County Community College was started then. That was another first big project. We ultimately did the, the downtown campus plus the master plan for all of the rest of the college. Later came several projects at U of M and MSU, along with Detroit's Metro Airport. And the Millinder Center downtown, one quite innovative for its time, built over a street and with the people mover passing through. We've done a lot of things that were sort of out of the box. Like here, at the gorgeous Museum of African American History. I was born and raised about three blocks from here. Kirby and Bovian. Decades later, he would develop the plan on that land for the largest museum of its kind in the world. In major projects, it's a collection of individuals. So I had a staff. Carol Viner joined, the, joined our firm. He became ultimately almost a 20% owner. Forming Sims, Varner & Associates. Decades later, the two parted after Varner passed renamed to the current SDG, Sims Design Group. Although quite modest, Sim pats himself on the back for his success. The person I most believe helped me was Howard Sims. There, I didn't have a guardian angel. Just hard work. 7 a.m. to midnight. <laughs> That's the work hours. <laughs> and Saturdays, whatever had to be done. His daughter Frances remembers that work ethic well. Seven in the morning till midnight, and I remember sometimes, you know, he'd get up in the middle of the night and start working. He's received many honors and awards for his work. It is nice to be honored, nice to be recognized. He's also been recognized for his enormous commitment to philanthropy. Serving on the Kellogg Foundation board for over two decades, he helped launch health and education programs in South Africa. I made my first trip to South Africa. To talk with South African leaders like Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. This was not about architecture, this was about philanthropy. Sims also served on several other significant boards from universities and banks to boards for economic development. It was incredibly significant. He was that dedicated to the city and, and his um, profession. And to helping others along with his wife of 57 years, Judith a former DPS teacher. 1980s, 
we decided to set up a scholarship fund, in this case at the University of Michigan. I think success is the intersection between being prepared and having the opportunity. So through his own success, he's helping provide that opportunity for hundreds of African-American college students. You were right. We have walked into a lot of his buildings. <laughs> yeah, we certainly have. He's lived quite a remarkable life. And I should tell you, Howard and Judith Sim expanded their scholarship fund to not only the School of Architecture at his alma mater at the University of Michigan, but also the schools of social work and education at U of M, MSU, Wayne State University, and a scholarship fund at Lawrence Tech as well. They've given nearly a million dollars to college students so far and counting. Is he still working, by the way? He He's 82 years old, as I said, but he he, he continues to go to the office. He's cut back on his hours. <laughs> he and his wife, hard. yeah, they live, they have a home in Scottsdale, Arizona, so they go there in the winter. It's very smart. But he's back and in the office quite often. He says he thinks he annoys them a little bit, but he likes to make sure that he has his mark on things that are happening well, still. I love that he grew up right around the corner from uh, right? the museum there. I mean, it's got to be an inspiration to kids everywhere in the city, no matter how hard it is now, you can do anything you want to do. Absolutely. Right there.